Yes, I know what I said, but you need to run out and get the M1 iPad Pro like right now. What's going on YouTube? Yes, I know I've had an on and off relationship with the M1 iPad Pro. I got it at launch. I went away from it for a few months and now I'm back with it and I've been happier than I've ever been with a tablet. So today I'm gonna tell you about three reasons why you really need to just go ahead and get this. There are a lot of great deals right now because it's the holidays. Uh, so before we get into all of it, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show. All right, so let's kick it right off with number one. And granted, guys, this isn't an important reason. It shouldn't make or break your decision to get or not to get the M1 iPad Pro, but it is going to have an impact. And that is the mental benefit of having the latest and greatest from Apple. Um, now this applies to a myriad of different devices that you could use, but especially on a device that you're using on a daily, as a daily driver to get work done, it's very important to have the latest and greatest because I know wherever I take this device, um, it's ready to go. Whether I need to plug in peripherals like an audio interface or SSDs, it's got the Thunderbolt to handle it. Whether I need to edit HDR content on the new iPhones or even just view HDR content, it's having that peace of mind where no matter what you're faced with out in the field or at home, you can handle it. And especially as the iPads begin to take on more and more of that laptop area where most of the things people do on a laptop, they can now do on the iPad. It's just important to have all the features. Plus, if any software updates happen uh, that take more advantage, of M1, we saw a recent update where third-party softwares can now request more RAM from the iPad Pro. These sort of updates will actually begin to push the iPad Pros to the max of what they're capable of. So it's really a simple case of better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, especially if you're doing a pro workflow with something like the iPad Pro. Now, I mentioned peripherals, and that's gonna bring us right into number two, which is performance on this M1 iPad Pro. And I'm actually going to stick by what I've been saying for the longest time. It, hey, if you got the 2020, 2018, or even 2017 iPad Pro, you're not gonna notice a big performance difference um, in daily use tasks or even pro tasks, editing video and stuff. I've had the 2018, 2017, and even now the 2021, not a big difference in editing. And it's not because the M1 isn't powerful. Unfortunately, it's the drawback of iOS, in particular iPad OS, which continues to handicap and cripple these iPad Pro devices. They made some slight improvements at WWDC with like the file management system, but it's largely still just such a weak operating system for what the iPad is able to do. Um, they even recently allowed third-party software to begin requesting more RAM from the iPad Pro. Um, so that's an improvement, but it's just not enough. But hopefully that will change in the future and having the M1 iPad Pro means you'll be ready to go if and when those changes come up. Uh, performance is also much better when it comes to peripherals. Whether you're plugging in a display or an audio interface, SD cards or SSD hard drives, uh, Thunderbolt just has the power, it has the bandwidth to charge itself and power all your peripherals so that you can get everything done with everything plugged in and you're not gonna notice a drop in speed at all or a drop in performance. Sometimes when I would be editing video off an SSD, um, USB 3 and the USB-C that's on the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros, uh, you could see that it would start to slow down or even sometimes completely reboot or cut off power to some peripherals. And that's just not something that's acceptable in a pro workflow because uh, sometimes things are mission critical and you just can't have things shutting down or going off in the middle of your workflow. Um, so in terms of performance, the M1 iPad has it all. Also the HDR display allows me to edit more HDR content as a lot of the stuff that I'm now shooting is in HDR on my camera, on my iPhone, even on this iPad. It seems everything's just going the way of Jonathan Morrison. So if you can't beat them, just join them. At the time, this was the best HDR display from an Apple device that you could get sub $5,000. And so obviously this was before the new MacBook Pros uh, had come out. So this was something that I was able to just jump right into. I already knew the operating system and I was able to edit HDR content. Uh, now, the third and final thing, and I think this is the most important thing that you should consider when it comes to um, getting or not getting this M1 iPad Pro. Let's talk about the releases of the iPad Pros. So it's always been kind of a one and a half to two year refresh cycle. 
you had the 2015 iPad Pro, which was the original. Then you had the 2017 iPad Pro, which was a beast at 120 hertz refresh rate, and the chips were just stupid powerful. Uh, but that was a two-year difference, roughly. Then you have the 2018 iPad Pro, which had the new form factor, okay? And then they took the 2019 year off. We didn't get another iPad Pro until last year in 2020, and then back to back, now they released the 2021 M1 iPad Pro. So what I'm saying all this uh, for is to suggest uh, it may be a two year cycle before we get the M2 iPad Pro. It could easily be two years, especially with the performance that this thing has. I think this is the device for the next two years. And if that's the case, you're going to get such longevity out of this device because it's just going to be the top notch creme de la creme iPad Pro for, you know, 15 to 24 months. I don't think we're going to see it in April. I think the earliest that we could see it because April was when this one released. I, I think the earliest that we could see it is potentially at WWDC 2020. Too, but I doubt that as well because Max Max Tech just released a video talking about how these M2 chips would probably first be seen on the MacBook Airs and those aren't set to come out until Q3 of 2022. We might get a slight refresh allowing the 11 inch iPad Pro to have the HDR mini LED display, but honestly, that's about it. A slight spec bump maybe in RAM or something like that. But other than that, uh, no refresh, I think, for the next 12 months at least on the iPad Pro. So those are my three reasons why you should go out and get the M1 iPad Pro. Now, once again, there are a lot of deals for the holidays. Uh, Black Friday just came. Cyber Monday just came. Maybe there are a couple deals hanging around you can snag. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of the M1 iPad Pro if you've had it the whole uh, since April that it's been out, I took off a couple of months. So this is really my nine month review. Also be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granny Geek Show.